Yes, hello everyone to uh, the next Skype webinar, uh, which will be about uh, easily building uh, business apps uh, for SharePoint and Office 365 uh, with Skype Solution Studio. So this is the this is a webinar, the webinar where we are going to uh, focus on capabilities of uh, Skype platform, uh, foremost Skype Solution Studio, and to see uh, what can be done with that, what are the benefits and uh, how can we um, how can this platform uh, rocket speed your uh, your business solutions on top of sharepoint online and office 365 my name is Alice Hugo. i am director of product technology at skybo what basically means i on one side i work closely with our um, with our development team with our engineering on the other side close with our partners uh, on um, the, uh, who implement uh, pro uh, projects uh, on top of uh, Skybo platform. I'm also Microsoft uh, most valuable professional for office servers and services, which was uh, which was earlier known as uh, SharePoint MVP, but also um, I'm also Microsoft MVP for office development, basically a category, uh, award category that uh, focuses on uh, developing solutions uh, and del delivering solutions on top of SharePoint and office platform. Uh, today with me is my colleague Matthias Walter. Hi, Matt. Hey, Aris. Okay, I guess he was on mute, on mute for a short. Uh, so uh, during the webinar, I guess you are going to have some questions and uh, everything. Please write, uh, state your questions in the questions window uh, in the GoToWebinar app, and uh, Matthias is going to. Uh, Follow, watch those questions, follow them. Uh, some of them may be answered immediately, and the rest of the questions we are going to answer on the end uh, of this webinar uh, in a live uh, in a live QA session. So uh, please, uh, uh, please uh, do uh, ask questions in the questions window, and uh, yeah, and uh, we are going to answer it on the end. So before we before we start with the. Uh, product itself, for showing the product itself. Uh, let me tell you a few words about, about platform, about our vision, what is Skype, what we are doing, and uh, what is our modus operandi, what is the way that we are delivering stuff. First and foremost, uh, the technology that we use is a fully uh, developed on modern stack, as they say today. So it's a client side based solely on top of SharePoint. There's no third party servers, there's no third party uh, stuff around. It is you, your SharePoint and uh, client code on top of uh, client side code on top of your SharePoint. So there is there is no uh, messing around with your SharePoint integrity, your SharePoint data, or uh, whatever is going on there. When we speak about business solutions, this is what we see here. As it uh, with the business solutions top of SharePoint is really like with every other solution type. Uh, we start developing any solution based on the data model. So we need to have some data on which we want to type a solution. We can then develop and create appealing UI, which we know it's a very, very important for our uh, end users to have a UI which, uh, which uh, definitely uh, dep depicts what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Um, we can define processes on top, and we should define processes uh, on top of SharePoint uh, which uh, work with your data. And as the last step, we want to produce some kind of reports. It can be dashboards, it can be, uh, it can be any KPIs, uh, or really um, hard written uh, reports. One when the uh, one when the solution uh, uh, one when the solution is uh, finished, we have all those different uh, all those different. Uh, stages from one solution that we know from uh, any other development. We need to govern the solution, we need to package and deploy. So this is what we do. Uh, this is an end-to-end -end platform which enables you really creating solution from, from beginning, from the data modeling, from the concept on the, on the beginning and on the end side, uh, on, the, on the back side to the publishing, updating, retracting, uh, modifying, change managing and, uh, uh, and, updating, uh, and updating and publishing again. So basically, as I mentioned, we have all the data in SharePoint. The data wizard is a data model is a wizard like on U, UI side. I'm going to show you an easy, really, what you see is what you get. Drag and drop UI designer uh, with uh, some really uh, nice and uh, neat features. 
In the processing stage, we have something which we call leak actions, uh, which are triggered from, uh, from the UI by the users, but also automated background calculations, aggregations, uh, scheduled actions, uh, etc. And on the reporting and dashboarding side, we are going to see some KPIs uh, importing Power BI dashboards, uh, creating uh, creating reports based on the board templates, etc. On the end, uh, for this solution, it's not only one developer we can manage, co-author and share solutions, and deploy, update, and retract them. Our promise and our claim is that if we take a look at these uh, major six phases of any solution, but also a SharePoint solution, um, also SharePoint solution, of course, uh, which are requirements engineering, design, implementation, deployment, operations, and change management, we are basically able, uh, and we can prove this, to reduce the time to market uh, up to 80% in uh, certain areas like implementation, deployment, and change management, but also in the other areas like design and operations. So uh, this is basically our promise and our claim in uh, rapid uh, rapid solution development on top of SharePoint. Typical solutions that we develop and that you develop with the uh, Skyboard Solution Platform are these all what we call business apps, business solutions. We call them like travel management, asset management, leave requests, contract management, or what we are going to see and show today is uh, internal purchasing uh, solution uh, where people uh, can make requests uh, for the uh, items or media or whatever they need in daily work and uh, inter internal purchasing department uh, can place those orders uh, by the uh, preferred vendors. We are going to see one such a solution today. It's a nice transition to that solution. Uh, this is what we want to achieve. Uh, this is actually a live solution that we did with our partners in Boston uh, for their customer. Uh, the solution was basically that a user and user should select a vendor from uh, which uh, she or he wants to purchase articles, uh, different items and different articles, uh, state the, uh, select the items and state the items. If the total value is less than 10,000 United States dollars, the order can be assembled and the order can be placed and on the end of the, the on the end of the process like uh, receive. If uh, the value is more than ten thousand dollars. There's a parallel approval process that running on that uh, this uh, this purchase needs to be verified and approved by the superiors. If the solution is uh, approved, then we are going to the assemble order and uh, and uh, place order and make has received uh, sequentially. As I said, all the data in SharePoint we are working with SharePoint data. So this is how our SharePoint model looks like data model. We have the uh, main SharePoint list of orders, uh, which also, of course, has a, uh, we have also looks from a list from items and vendors which are associated with these uh, orders. But also, uh, we have uh, we are interacting with employees, which is just uh, just uh, user profiles, uh, employees who who are who are ordering those items. And of course, we are also working with locations, which are just a user profile field from the employees, uh, which we want to use, uh, read automatically, and uh, and use. As you see on the uh, on the uh, lowest level, we have uh, that uh, we see that each item um, or each request or purchase uh, can be from different categories and can have uh, different units of measure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With that, I'm going to stop showing slides and let's go to this solution to see how the, does the solution look like, what, how, uh, and how, uh, how did, uh, was it implemented with Skybo Solution Studio. Before I start, just one sentence, the whole solution was uh, implemented in less than one day, in less than, in less than one work day, but means in less than eight hours. I'm going first to show you the uh, finished solution. This is the one. This is my view as a normal employee. I'm not a member of the uh, manager's group who can, uh, who can hear um, approve the purchases and uh, place the orders and the, uh, the other stuff. So this is what I see here. I see only the items which I have purchased uh, until now, which I have requested until now. I can see here the status of each of those items. You see that those are all placed. So the, the, the uh, purchase process uh, is already, uh, is already quite, quite advanced with these items. This crescent here, we, know, we see the items which are needed overnight. 
And here on the right side, we see the total amount uh, of total amount uh, of each item, and uh, for which of these items an approval process is uh, needed in the background. This is this red icon. So we see immediately uh, that in the um, items list view uh, where we see uh, what uh, where, where each user sees what she or he has purchased, there's immediately kind of a small dashboard with KPIs. We see the, the item status, we see it in the textual form, textual form, we see those which are needed overnight, and we see uh, those with approval. So our end user has immediately an easier view of what is going on there and uh, what are the next possible steps. Of course, I have here only like seven, eight items in my test environment. If I would have more, I could easily uh, filter those lists by, uh, let's say, by vendor. I could just say ASM dry eyes. And I'm getting only four, four items, of course, here. Or I could say, of course, let's say a category. And then I could say here, eight in dry eyes. And you see, I can combine all those, uh, all those items, uh, all those uh, conditions uh, to find my items which are, which are needed uh, on a way. Which is easy to click on the set. I'm getting all my items, uh, all my items listed again. So let's walk slowly to the process. I'm still a normal user. I'm going to make a new request. And this is how my request form looks like. You see, it's a SharePoint form, but pre-populated intelligent SharePoint form. When I click here, that I want, now I will also choose media now, and I will going to say vendor is going to be Staples. I'm going to put uh, item catalog number from the Staples W001 for webinar. Item name um, keyword. Request notes. I have here a um, validation field where I say that I need at least 100 characters to uh, explain why do I need this key keyboard. So I will just take it here and do that. I need uh, some keyboards. And I'm just going hmm, I have a typo here. And I'm just going to copy this few more times to get a threshold of 100 characters. Units of measure each, obviously in this case. Unit price. Now we are going to a bit play with the price. I'm going to put $100. It's a really expensive keyboard in this case. If I put here 100 keyboards, we will see that here, extended price has been immediately calculated to 10,000. If you remember, my threshold is more than 10,000. So if I would put here 101, my user is immediately getting a message that approval is needed and the parallel approval process in the background is going to start. Before I submit, I would just like to show you uh, uh, those three fields which we have here. The field location, in my case, is immediately read, uh, read Germany, it has been read from my user profile field from SharePoint, so I don't need to end, uh, enter which is my location. The date required is uh, obviously today's date, and you see that my uh, title here is immediately said keyboard requested by me on uh, 33rd, so I don't even have to. Uh, I don't even have to really um, put here the, the uh, title. It, it's being pre-calculated for me. When I save this item now, the page will automatically refresh, and you see here I have my new item. I have all the data as I need. The status of this item is immediately sent. Uh, is uh, immediately set to submit it. So you see on the icon, it's very different from those other items which are uh, which are uh, just placed. In order to make an uh, to make an um, in order to make a new uh, order, I need at least two items in my for my purchase. So I'm going to quickly add another one. It needs to be from same vendor and same location. Location is immediately read. That's easy. But I'm going to uh, again to see its media. I'm going to say it's staples. I'm going to say it's this is 002, it's a mouse, so I'm just going to copy this few more times, units of measure each, this is of course cheaper, and I need only 10, so obviously I don't have here, I don't have here the, the uh, any icon, uh, any icon for, for, uh, for uh, approval. So I'm not going to put needed overnight because uh, all those which are needed overnight need to be uh, composed inside one order. So I'm going just to leave it as it is. When I save this now, 
is going to be refreshed immediately. And you see here, I have those two items. One is require, one requires the approval, another doesn't. Those are my two items. And somebody from the purchasing uh, can now approve this and go on the, uh, with purchasing. So I'm going to change my role. Basically, in SharePoint Lingo, I'm going, um, I'm going to add myself in the group managers, who are in this case um, entitled to uh, approve and to uh, go on with the purchase. So I'm just going to re-add myself in this group. There it is. Now I'm not a simple user anymore. Now I'm a manager. So when I refresh this page, I'm getting a few more options in the menu here. So my next option is, as a manager is actually to assemble an order. So I can click here and assemble order. And I'm getting all the items which are still not placed, which are all, only those my items which I can purchase now, all the others are already placed. So I can just easily say, hey, I want to sell it both, and I want now to assemble it. But I'm getting a nice message, I need to select a vendor. So in this case, I was going for staples. Doing this again, assembling an order, and now, as a manager, as somebody who is entitled to do that, I'm getting all the my purchase order number automatically pre-calculated for me by an algorithm in the background. I have my vendor pre-populated. I am going to put some date. Um, uh, let's say thirty-first. It's fourteenth or thirteenth, uh, and I am going to put location Germany in this case. Uh, so I am going to save here. In this moment, those two items, you will see there is nothing anymore in the in the uh, in the request for in the uh, in the uh, assembly uh, assembly order form. Uh, those two items are, uh, are disappeared since we now have an order actually order uh, created here. So if I would go now to the order overview, I will see all my existing orders. I have four existing orders which are already paid placed. And my new order from today, we see it as it is here. If I open this order, I'm already seeing the stage of, it, of this order. We are in the, in the assemble mode, uh, the assemble stage, so we can go from submitted to assembled, placed, and received. We see all the master and detailed data here in one order, in a, in a nicely, in, a, in one nice overview. So we see it's from Staples, it's from Germany, today's day. I have my purchase order number, which has been generated for me, and I have our mouses and I have our keyboards, uh, keyboards being here. So the next next stage uh, will be for me. So uh, I can still I can now uh, still delete an order because I didn't place it because it's still in assembly uh, stage. But I still, of course, cannot make it as received. It's disabled. But what I'm going to do is actually to place an order. By clicking on a place an order, I'm going to put an expected date here. And then I'm get obviously receiving a vendor order number, which I got from Staple in this case. In case I'm going to call ST001. With saving this, the page will be automatically reload, reloaded. And we see that we have a placed order with extended price properly calculated, etc. etc. What can I do now? I can obviously not delete order anymore because it has been placed by the it has been placed to the uh, to the vendor. I can now mark it as received, but it's just a simple procedure. What I can also do now is I can actually print the order sheet by clicking uh, on this uh, option. I'm getting in a wrong window a board document created for me. Uh, where we see that, okay, it's composed of uh, corporation. I have my purchase order number. We have all the data which I put here in master detail duration. You see, this is my master data. This is my detailed data, obviously. And, of course, I have my items uh, listed here, listed here in the data, in the data as we, uh, as we expected. So I have even created a printed receipt uh, on, on a way which I can then uh, archive it uh, and uh, do all the uh, document management stuff which I, which I need in this document. I can open this document and it now, or I can immediately tell the system to save it in a document library, which uh, may, may be then the resource management document library, uh, document library from, from this stage. So this is basically a very easy way how to, uh, 
how to get all your uh, how to get this process done. Uh, you can uh, see that all the the the, uh, the the users can have an easy understand the easy and understandable user interface. It should guide them through entering the process, uh, to, to entering the data, and that the people who are entitled to uh, to approve orders and to uh, manage purchases uh, also have a really easy way to uh, to go uh, what's going on. If I would now um, if I would now go to the uh, order assemblage form again, you see that even here I can even here dashboards where you can integrate literally any any dashboards uh, from any vendor which you can you can have directly into our system. And you see obviously I have more monitors, but I also have mouses and my keyboards uh, from today. So the the point here, this solution as it is, this process as it is, has been developed. Um, has been uh, developed in less than one day and delivered as such uh, to the uh, to the end uh, to the customers and to the users uh, for them to use them and it's, uh, and it's in use uh, since then. So I first wanted to show you the finished result, how it looked like. Let's now go to the overview. How did we build this? How did uh, how did uh, this solution uh, came to existence? So. I'm, Taking you now uh, to something which we call Skybo Solution Studio. As you see, this is a web application uh, where all your solutions live. Uh, solutions on top of SharePoint. My solution here is called Sourcing. I have a few more solutions, including time shift management, whatever. I could go here for adding a new solution. I could start from scratch, which I did there, or I could start uh, from one of the existing templates. Our templates would be like lead registration, employee management, Time sheet management, contract management. Those are the those are the, the uh, templates which we have for now. Uh, listen, this list is growing very fast, and uh, you can uh, you can expect more and more templates from us. The idea from templates which we have is, for example, if we if we focus on time sheet management, you know that the time sheet management process is very similar with every customer, with every company, but different enough that you can't have one solution fits all. So what we uh, do here is basically uh, uh, in templates have pre-developed features which are common for the most of the companies, for most of the customers, and then you as solution builders can develop this missing 20% and really fine-tune it, uh, fine -tune it uh, according to the needs of your customers or your own company. I'm not going to reuse uh, templates here, I'm just going to go back. Uh, I'm not also going to start from the scratch. This will give me an empty white canvas uh, to create a solution on top of SharePoint. I'm going to open this existing sourcing solution. And for anybody who was working the solution building, this will be actually uh, very, uh, very easy to understand and uh, very logical. On the left side, we have our data models. In our case, uh, the data model here is uh, orders and requests. So as you can see, you can easily uh, move around uh, your data model, all those requests. We have all the other lists which are referenced by one of those two lists, uh, like searching vendors, categories, units of measure and locations. We have also those lists uh, which, uh, which are part of the solution but not, not part of the data model. Um, reason for that, for example, if I would go now for uh, units of measure, I have like uh, 10 or 15 different ones. I can tell here, hey, please. Next time when you deploy this solution, please take the uh, please please take the content of this list and uh, make it a part of, the, of a package. We are going to talk about packaging uh, packaging uh, in a, in a bit. So this is our data model. We call it solution elements. Basically, how you can easily navigate navigate through your solution. If you open any of those uh, solution elements. You can see the forms designer as, uh, as we have. For example, we are now in the orders. In the order form, we have uh, we have, for example, different forms associated with this uh, with this uh, with this list. So you can see all those. You can be you can uh, easily uh, resize and drag and drop them. Uh, you can use different uh, container controls uh, like tables, tabs, divs, whatever. To uh, position those, uh, to position those orders, uh, to position those uh, controls exactly how you how you want to have it. As we hear, uh, and we see here in the display form of the order, we have obviously a tabbed interface uh, with here with two columns uh, with the master data. 
we have uh, immediately here a, li a list for the for the detailed data for the uh, items so that our users as you see here in orders have this easy easy master master detail uh, master detail view on the left side so this is uh, you know, from the user interface as you see here for each of those fields okay this would be a, this would not be a proper field but if i click here for each of those fields you can create you can uh, set a, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, different properties you can see here um, uh, which of those fields are um, enabled visible uh, in this, uh, calculated what's the default initial value we can uh, put mass validation of those fields etc etc so we definitely we definitely have uh, uh, have this uh, thing going on we have a form here which is a new form where we see here for example if I uh, click on the request notes if you remember from me showing you uh, it is uh, I said we need here at least 100 characters for this uh, request to be valid how, how simple that uh, to make is you see here that you just say hey we just want that request notes length needs to be at least 100 characters in length so this is very, basically a very simple very simple uh, expression builder based on JavaScript and SharePoint data on the right side which lets you do this thing on a very easy uh, and uh, on a very easy manner if you go back uh, to the orders form as you see here, we have those different process uh, process elements. We call this action link. So we see that all of those have different features. Some of them are just page navigation, but some of them are actually uh, uh, walking your user through the process. Let's say walking uh, walking user from submitted to assemble to place to uh, to receive. And if we click on one of those items here, we see how simple actually that is. We are updating a SharePoint list item saying that it's a, now it's a placed order. We are opening the form for user to gather uh, some more data and we can uh, even define how this form looks like. And on the end, the last thing we need to do is uh, to, reload, to reload this form. What I, can, uh, show you, uh, what I have shown you uh, earlier, uh, this uh, document generation based on top SharePoint where I created this report, uh, how, it, how does it all look like? This is that action. So if I open this here, you see I have different options in this one. I have existing template. I'm going to show you that one in a second. So you see this is a simple Word document, not even uh, not even a Word template, uh, which where I basically put just uh, tokens in the in the field uh, placeholders in the fields where I need my uh, my real live data. So this is stored in your SharePoint, and on the mo in the moment where your user says create this report, this uh, data, this uh, placeholders are going to be replaced with the real live SharePoint data. You see here that I put this uh, as a target open browser uh, for the sake of the demo. But usually, what you will uh, often want to do is actually just to say say to library, and when I, I need, then I need to select the library uh, and even to select the subfolder of the ri library. And even uh, I can put uh, I can put a formula how to create how to name those documents how to create uh, those uh, titles. I'm going to uh, leave it open in browser, and uh, this is basically the processes process engine for the users. How can they use your application? That's easy for the processes which are triggered by users, actions which are triggered by users. We also have a whole set of actions which are actually triggered uh, in the background. So for example, if I will go to the request list here, I have here something called things in background. And you can see I'm getting the list of fields. And for example, I have the price field here. And you see that my price field is always uh, is always calculated for me. When I say, hey, my price is quantity multiplied with unit price. So if I have 100 keyboards, uh, 100 keyboards which costs $101, I'm getting $10,100. Uh, $10, but this price is calculated for the mean background. I don't, I don't need um, my users to worry how those totals are calculated. I have very different options uh, which I can do here. I can do uh, automatic aggregations. I can do uh, expressions. 
I can even do I can even do uh, metadata inheritance. What I mean with uh, what I do mean with the automated uh, with, uh, with automated ag aggregations. If I go now to my order list and if I do the same, if I go to the, to the things in background and find the very same field, extend the price, you're going to see that the uh, formula for extend the price on the order level is not any more multiplica multiplication as I have it on the item level. I could here way easier way just to say, hey, please make me a sum total of all the values from the request list from the field exp uh, extended price. So this expression here for me is just telling me just always do the summary inside one order to always have the total price, extended price properly properly calculated. It's not only math formulas, you remember the dashboards I've, uh, I've shown you in the very beginning with those KPIs, with the, uh, with the, um, with the, I, with the uh, order status icon or the, the overnight icon. We have all this here, so if you click here on order status icon, uh, no, this, uh, this is the wrong one, this is the one I need. You see this is also a formula where I actually look what is my status and uh, setting a proper picture in the SharePoint field showing, uh, showing the status as I want. So basically what I'm saying here that each field in your SharePoint can be a calculated field without using a calculated field column. You can have textual calculated field, numeric calculated field, date calculated field, and even as you see here, picture calculated field where you're getting results, uh, results such as this here, but this is calculate. This is uh, be calculated in the background using uh, this expression, which I have uh, shown you until now. So that was relatively easy, as you can see. In less than one day, we have we have gotten this uh, finished. We have uh, we have created our solution. We did what we uh, what we think uh, it fits uh, customer's requests or your own request. So what's the next step? As you see here, I'm all the time inside my SharePoint my SharePoint dev site, sorry, my SharePoint dev site in this case, this is where I am. So the next step would be to actually package this everything and publish it to customer sites or even publish it from dev site to a test site uh, to a production site, so, so to walk that line. So the next step here will be the really packaging. So I'm going here to packaging and I have my very first version. I can click here and create a new package. It does uh, take like up to 10 minutes, so we are not going to do this live. Uh, uh, there's no point in uh, uh, looking at uh, progress bar uh, going on. So, but you see I have versions 1.0 and 1.05. Why is that I deleted the, the, the divergence in between because they were just test versions? Of course, uh, you see that uh, the new package is immediately, is immediately offering me the next version. I will say here we have added um, I don't know, this is the, uh, I will just put here changes in reports and I will put here we can add some changes in reports. I could uh, put here a screenshot which is uh, which is important for this solution and by clicking on next I will basically here go uh, and start packaging. I'm going to stop this now because it, uh, it takes a bit longer but you can do analyze existing packages we have this here in logs. If I open a log, you see here that the, this package contains everything what is relevant for your solution. It's your uh, SharePoint uh, artifacts like lists, libraries, uh, content types, columns, etc., etc. So everything, all the data artifacts you need. Uh, it it, uh, it also uh, contains the data of the lists which we have uh, marked that we want to take the data in the package, like Remember what I have shown you uh, before with the uh, with the units of measure list. We have like 20 different units of measure. I don't want to retype them each time we come uh, we deploy this uh, to another site. So I want I want to take the, the content of this uh, list and take it with me. And of course all the customizations we have made. So all the processes, all the form customizations, all the uh, all the stuff uh, which we have done in this solution, uh, the user interface, reports, and everything. So all that is packaged into this one package. This is version 01. The next, I, uh, what I could do here is go to publishing and just say, hey, create a new publish. I'm going to say test publish. 
publish slide. I would put some description. I would choose the solution which I want to publish, in this case 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And I would put the target site where I want to publish it. This target site can be in the same uh, SharePoint tenant, but also can be in different SharePoint tenants. So you can uh, publish it from your own tenant to your customer's tenant or from your uh, dev tenant to your staging tenant, from your staging to, uh, to, uh, to, your, uh, uh, to your production tenant, etc., etc. If you deploy to different tenant, you will need to provide credentials here to log into that tenant also just to, uh, to be able to deploy. You need to be a site owner on the site. Where, uh, where, where the deployment takes uh, place. So not a site collection admin, but I one level below, which will be which will be site owner. This process also uh, lasts like 10 to 15 minutes. My, co my colleague Matthias, which is in the background of this call, actually made a really cool, uh, really cool uh, YouTube video with our uh, which explains the publish and the package and publish process uh, in the in the detail. So you can you can look at there what's going on if you if you need that in detail. Another important thing, let's say we have deployed here, uh, we have deployed here version 00, 1000, uh, here 005, but if it would be 100, I could actually click here and I could update the version to the next version. So uh, in this case, we would not delete or change the existing data, we would just determine the delta, the difference between those two uh, solutions and deployed what's missing here. So here we have uh, some updates in the approval process. Remember this more than $10,000. So uh, we are just deploying the changes in the approval process. We are not changing anything else. We are not changing your list structures. We are not changing your list data, SharePoint data, in this case purchase data. It all remains in place. We just uh, deploy and update the differences. Of course, for all the different reasons, you also might want to remove the deployment. And this is exactly this is exactly what uh, what we uh, what we can do. Clicking on this icon during the work days, uh, work hours, uh, which is in Europe, not anymore. You can uh, chat with one of our team members if you have any questions or any anything you actually you actually want to ask. So you see here with this solution, we are actually able to give you the whole uh, uh, the whole um, end to end development experience on top of SharePoint, where you can uh, literally create your data models out of your SharePoint data using just the SharePoint data uh, artifacts like uh, uh, list libraries and lookups between those. In the what you see sections here, you can uh, build, uh, you can build beautiful and appealing UIs as you as you see here what we are what we are doing here, both here in the uh, in the action uh, links and here in the things in background. Uh, you can uh, build the processes which are either manually triggered, automatically calculated, or even scheduled. Like we have here, uh, existing report uh, of placed orders. Uh, we are reporting placed orders uh, each week to the manager. We see that this is uh, okay each month. Uh, we see that it's scheduled monthly on uh, every first of the month, uh, starting in October. And my action here is actually sending an email. To the manager with uh, with the report of all the all the uh, placed orders which uh, which we have had in the previous months. So as you see here, this is very much uh, equivalent and parallel what we had in uh, SharePoint Server with timer jobs. So you can put in scheduled actions uh, which are going to be executed upon your data in any interval. In any interval here we might uh, we might uh, might want to have. On the end of the day, as we have seen, uh, we have a decent uh, and more than decent uh, reporting and, uh, and uh, KPI capabilities uh, out of the box with us. Uh, you can see in the, here the, the uh, reports, how they look like. But if it's not enough, you, for the dashboards, you can integrate Power BI or any third-party library, as we have seen, uh, to uh, work, uh, easily integrate to work, to work on top of your data. So uh, we have seen the solution, how it works. Let's see the different use cases where we can use this solution. The typical use case uh, where a lot of people ask us, hey, can you help us with InfoPath uh, replacement? Yes, we can. This is actually the uh, only solution, uh, we dare to say the only solution on the market, uh, on the market uh, currently, which actually covers, uh, which actually uh, has one-to-one -one feature parity with InfoPath. 
So the, the things which InfoPath are really good at, like uh, following security, uh, like InfoPath security was SharePoint security. So the security was at SharePoint side, we do the same. There is no additional security layer that you need to manage your security somewhere else to you see, aha, this can be done, this cannot be done, I need a connector from that user, or I need a connector from that user, no. Users which you have in SharePoint are users which, uh, which you can uh, have with us. Complex forms, InfoPath was really good with repeating forms, repeating tables, as you have seen here, uh, we can do the same. Just remember all those master detail, uh, master detail forms, both on screen and printed, uh, printed in a Word, that uh, we can easily really uh, implement master detail with few clicks and without any uh, development. We are SharePoint native. It's a client code, but a client client side code which lives in your SharePoint. So you are not making a server code uh, to anywhere anywhere else. It's basically JavaScript JavaScript on your SharePoint side. I have shown you a very extensive field behaviors uh, which we have, uh, like uh, validation, like pre-calculated fields, uh, and all the other stuff uh, which we have there, enabled, disabled, uh, required, visible, unvisible, uh, whatever. We can do that without development with few, with few clicks. If you need code behind, and that was one of the strong uh, strong uh, capabilities of InfoPath because not everything can be done with drag and drop and click here and click there. Often there was a need basically to uh, fall back to uh, to uh, developing code. We can do that as well. Our code is JavaScript, but JavaScript which is uh, very much SharePoint powered. Uh, I would say it's a, it's a, it's a SharePoint. Uh, pumped JavaScript uh, what we have here, so you can just easily uh, write yeah, JavaScript, you developers can easily write JavaScript code and put SharePoint placeholders here. I can even for developers among you sh uh, sh uh, shortly uh, show you how does this actually work. In a view we are not going to go to this code uh, thoroughly, but just to see that this, this actually uh, perfectly works here. If I would go in assemble order, I have here a full JavaScript editor where this uh, order assemblance in one in one uh, case is actually need uh, need to be done uh, need to be done by code. It's still a pretty simple code block here, but it can be done. You are not you are not stuck. Uh, uh, you are not stuck uh, if uh, on uh, if uh, drag and drop is uh, not enough in this case. Actions you have seen different actions which can do. We can send emails. We can uh, update items. We can execute code, and we can uh, do a lot of show messages can do a lot of cool stuff with our actions. Um, as you have seen here, the whole uh, whole uh, approval process has been uh, has been built with our actions. So this is actually a pretty convenient and neat way uh, how to do this. We don't call it workflow because it's not a typical workflow. We don't do branching, we don't do state machines and all the other stuff which are important for workflows. But in any, in, uh, in uh, any case, we can uh, our actions, our state actions and stages are very much, uh, uh, very much, uh, very much uh, enough to implement decent approval processes, purchasing processes, or or similar. You are going to go to get this uh, slide uh, slide deck uh, later for your reference. So I will put uh, this old title in the bubbles. Uh, why is InfoPath so important? Because InfoPath is actually deprecated by Microsoft. There is no development currently, and there is no development plan. Uh, they just um, put InfoPath on extended support from the reason that there is no equivalent from uh, Microsoft as a company uh, to replace InfoPath. Power apps are there, but they have slightly different target and slightly different audience. They don't even try to cover feature parity one one to InfoPath. Uh, so this is a, you have power apps here in, this, in the middle line here. So uh, from uh, because of the reason that there is no decent uh, or there is no equivalent replacement uh, from Microsoft. Microsoft has put InfoPath uh, basically on the on the prolonged support. Even that is uh, not true for everything because some functionalities are being switched off in InfoPath. Last year we have witnessed the switching of the uh, switching of the uh, code behind uh, features in InfoPath for all uh, forms which are published to SharePoint online. So those forms, InfoPath forms which get whole, uh, code behind have stopped uh, functioning, so uh, 
we have a lot of uh, there's a lot of really info dead info platforms uh, being stored in the SharePoint online which can, cannot be executed anymore. And since I all touch, there's always problems with info path, with general maintenance, uh, different issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not only info path. Uh, you have probably heard that Microsoft is dep deprecating and switching off actually access services in the uh, in um, SharePoint Online. We have uh, now confirmation that uh, access services are probably going to be uh, there in SharePoint 2019, but marked as deprecated. They're going to be there as a, as a, just as a, to uh, to uh, from the compatibility reasons. But this is something that you should also get uh, get off. We beside of what you have seen here, Skyward Solution Studio is also the only platform which can uh, which offers one-to-one -one features parity uh, feature parity with access services. So uh, we have I have shown you our advanced uh, master detail uh, data models which we call dossiers, uh, where you can uh, put really master detail relations. Uh, we have here orders and items, in this case being master detail. We can do background processes the same way access could do background processes. We can put reporting and dashboards uh, the same way you could do that with access services. And what, what even access services could not do, we have the full ALM circle, uh, cycle uh, covered, like deployment, publish, uh, pack, package, publish, update, retract, change package publish and uh, etc etc so basically so yes we can say that uh, Skyward Solution Studio is at the moment the only one to one only uh, only uh, only uh, product and only platform which can uh, offer one to one feature parity with access services and all that being on top of modern stack with JavaScript with client uh, development and everything is uh, Microsoft DevOps so there are just some screenshots uh, here, but we, we see here a report uh, from this here, and we also he uh, see here simple Google charts, charts integrated into your SharePoint in a page, uh, being a part of Skyvo Skyvo Solution Studio. I can show you that. Uh, I can show you that. With that, we are finishing in time. It's quarter uh, to eight my time, or quarter to three uh, Eastern time. Um, I would like now. Uh, uh, to go to the questions, uh, if we have any, uh, Matthias was uh, probably uh, following all that in the background. If there are any, uh, and uh, and uh, for those uh, for those of you who are attending one of those events in the next few months, SharePoint events like Skyward is going to be at SharePoint Fest in Washington DC in uh, East Coast of United States. We are definitely going to be part of SharePoint Conference North America in Vegas. Uh, where Microsoft is going to announce a lot of new products and a lot of new services. And just one week later for the, our European A audience, uh, basically the sister event uh, where all the Microsoft people are flying over uh, here to Europe to uh, deliver the same, the same sessions and the same news in Mainz in Germany. So if you are by chance part of any of those three events, come to us, talk to us to our booth, on our booth and uh, require, uh, request a live demo what you can also do now uh, after this uh, after this uh, after this webinar but you can also talk to us here in person and uh, we with us Matthias have there been any questions left um, let's wait some more seconds but um, so far there's nothing no questions until now Pretty okay <laughs> no no I hope I hope I uh, I explained everything. Uh, that's the reason that uh, there are no questions until now. <laughs> Properly explained. Properly explained. So maybe some more seconds. Just uh, ask your questions in the question uh, board. Okay. I can only see that someone is raising his hand, but um, you can type in your questions. Uh, in the question board in the um, go to webinar panel otherwise um, yeah always ask questions afterwards there will be a, a blog page with the recording so you can as well ask the questions uh, over there or yeah directly to us. 
So ah. is there a is there a now, trial? Ah, very good question. I've I've seen that one already. question. Okay, uh, trial version. There there is no need. It's free for developers. So you can just go to uh, my.skyball.com. You need to register there with your either Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft your uh, work account or Microsoft like uh, like work office or work work or education account, or with your personal Microsoft account and start building. So there is no charges imply. Uh, there are no even uh, any uh, limits. You can use all this. Uh, the uh, pricing, uh, the whole pricing done so uh, is only per user when you actually deploy your solution. Uh, that users who actually actively use that they will then uh, need uh, they will need to pay something for it. Uh, the price is very transparent. Let me just show uh, this for this solution here. Your users would then have to pay uh, if you have uh, approximately thousand users, they will need to pay one uh, ninety five euro cents, similar uh, similar to the dollar cents uh, now uh, uh, ninety five euro cents uh, per user per month. We have also different pricing models later per year, per year, or the platform thing, or whatever. But for you to try it, to build this in full feature, in full with full capacity, just go register to solutions to, uh, to my.skyball.com. This is the uh, page. I'm going to open it uh, once more. It's my.skyball.com. You have our uh, all the learning materials, knowledge base, and everything. Um, also our community with forums and with everything. Uh, as here, you can join the discussions. You can post idea. You can see the roadmap. What we are working on right now. Uh, I clicked to ask the question. This is not what I wanted to click. I actually wanted to uh, click on roadmap. So you see uh, what's launched, what's rolling out, what's in development, and you see in development we are definitely uh, now doing support for SharePoint on premises. Working a lot on uh, modern experiences uh, to support modern experiences from the SharePoint online and uh, pay support from a multiple currency. So you see what's going on here, but the most important one of those things for here would be to go to solutions once you have registered. And when you are in solutions, need to wait for my browser to load. It's basically to click create new solution and to start. If you have any questions, then I have shown you this, uh, this uh, short link. Uh, where One of uh, our colleagues is always there to help you. Yeah, nothing to install, always one user for free, so just start with it. And the second question is uh, if the uh, webinar will be provided offline. Yeah, uh, yes, of course, there will be a recording. Uh, you will get an email um, and there will be a blog post um, with full recording afterwards. Okay. Uh, yes. I think that's all for today. If that's Thanks, all. Addis. Thank um, you, Matthias. We wish a um, really nice afternoon to um, nice afternoon to all our uh, uh, visitors from the uh, United States and a uh, nice evening to all our European uh, attendees here. Yeah, and then, hey, until the next uh, Skybo webinar. Bye. Thanks, bye.